Welcome back everyone to another What If episode breakdown. So today I'm going to be talking about What If episode 2. This is the episode on What If T'Challa Became Star-Lord. If you have not seen the episode, go watch it, then come back to this video. So yeah. Anyway. So the episode opens on Morag, which is the planet where the where the orb was contained. The orb is basically this object that, that contains the power stone. Um, most of the Infinity Stones have like some sort of container that holds them. The Space Stone has the Tesseract, which which we which we literally saw last episode. In um, <clears throat> in the first episode, we already saw the Tesseract. So in this episode, now we're going to see the Orb. So yeah, so most of them are used. So T'Challa is this version of Star Lord, and eventually he is captured, not captured, but he's confronted by Korath. This guy, he's played by the same actor who played him in Guardians of the Galaxy. But what ends up happening is um, his reaction is actually, he's actually very happy to see him because it turns out Korath is a huge fanboy of T'Challa because, uh, yeah, because basically T'Challa is viewed as this kind of like giant hero across the galaxy. So everybody kind of has great respect and love for him, basically. And uh, yeah, most people don't. The people who don't really like him are the people like the collector and some other people as well. But yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, Korath tells his men to stand down because what ends up happening is uh, they are because they they came here to steal the orb from him because just like in this timeline, Korath still works for Ronin and Ronin works for Thanos. But more on that a little bit later. So yeah, but Korath reveals that he never actually wanted to work for Ronin, so he actually wants to join the Ravagers, which is supposed to be who T'Challa kind of works for, but I'll get into that later and how he joins them. So he eventually, so he, he tries to spar T'Challa, but of course he loses, and what ends up happening is he ends up taking him because he said he wanted to join anyway. So as soon as he does, a bunch of the guys, they try to stop him. And then eventually uh, Yandu comes in and takes care of him. And then he takes the orb. Now I think I I think they were planning on using the orb to like save uh I think they were planning on using the orb to uh save like the galaxy. Well not the galaxy, but save like some sort of planet. Which I don't know what that was about, but yeah. But they were going on do but they were planning on doing something like that, I believe. So what they ended up doing basically is uh basically what they ended up doing then is uh there's a flashback to Earth. Wakanda, 1998. Basically, I think this is around the same time that, uh, this is supposed to be around the same time, I believe, in world history that Nelson Mandela was thrown in prison because of the stuff. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, actually, is because, uh, T'Challa's ship is named Mandela after Nelson Mandela. So that's why I had to bring that up. But anyway, so because of this, so, uh, because of this, uh, this version of T'Challa kind of doesn't really like, uh, he wants to explore the world, but the thing is, though, his father kind of explains that, uh, his father mostly explains that, um, everything is kind of destructive and pain and violence. It is kind of true because there's a lot of corruption and there's a lot of, like, violence and stuff like that, and there's lots of pain as well, but obviously, though, uh, he still wants to explore it because, Obviously, I think the lesson that, that uh, I think he's trying to bring up here is that you never try to stereotype or uh, never try to assume stuff about other countries without actually, like, looking into it and actually doing the research on it. Actually research this stuff before you actually make assumptions. Actually do that and don't actually stereotype and assume things about others because, obviously, that's not right, and you're basic, and you're basically putting something on someone's head where you don't even know if it's true or not. So anyway, so T'Challa ends up escaping because obviously he has this giant urge to go explore the world, and because of this, he ends up he ends up running into Yandu's ship. They end up taking him, and Yandu gets mad at his men because apparently he told them, "You guys, you idiots, you guys brought the wrong boy," and I can figure that. Out. And I'm sure he's probably mad, but uh. T'Challa, as a kid, he he basically explains to Yondu that the, the that the reason why they got him instead of Peter Quill is because they came to uh is because Wakanda has is made off a giant vibranium meteorite, and what ends up happening is um uh, because it's made off of meteorite, it obviously attracts their ship toward it, and that's why they came close to Wakanda instead of going to the United States, which is where Peter Quill was. But yeah. So, kind of weird, but not really. I don't know fully, but yeah. Basically, what ends up happening is uh, he basically offers him, uh, why don't you go explore the galaxy and stuff like that? Because, obviously, T'Challa has this giant urge to go explore. So, he agrees, and now that's where they're at today. 
and now they go back to present day, and Korath ends up talking with T'Challa. Now, basically, T'Challa is just... T'Challa is basically loved among everybody in, in the universe, except for, like, maybe people, like, who don't really like it, or the people at least he steals from. So, yeah. So, Korath reveals that Ronan actually wanted the Power Stone to wipe out the Nova Corps, which is which is actually what his main goal was in the in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Because what ended up happening was, well, no, I, I guess I'd rather just reveal it. Thanos kind of changed a lot, and uh, I could explain that right now. I'll explain that right now because apparently uh, T'Challa explains that he kind of talked him out of it. I don't know how he did, but he just did. So basically, here is the footage of what he basically said. Let me replay that. T'Challa here showed me there was more than one way to reallocate the universe's resources. Sometimes the best weapon in your arsenal is just a good argument. Aye, aye, Commander. Although I still assert my plan was not without its merits. Uh. Okay, so basically Thanos explains that T'Challa kind of just talked him out of it. Which is quite insane, honestly. I think I think uh, another lesson to be learned here is that uh, talking your way out of a situation is probably one of the most useful skills you could probably develop, and it's also a pretty simple one too. I mean, it might take some hard work, but it's it's not like you have to burn your legs or exercise as much. But all you have to do is be able to talk your way out of it. If you are able to talk your way out of something, then basically that is probably one of the most useful skills. A person can especially have, especially if you're in a fight or something like that, and someone's about to attack you, all you gotta do is you gotta talk your way out of it, and you're good to go. If you don't want to take a test, talk your way out of it, and you're good to go. But yeah, anyway, uh, so basically, uh, so yeah, so basically he explains that uh, T'Challa kind of just showed him a different way how to locate the universe's resources. So anyway, now back to Ronin. So Ronin works for Thanos in the Guardians movie, but he tries to betray him, which ends up going horrible for him, and then he ends up dying later. When, when he tries to eradicate the Nova Corps. But since he's not working for him now, that means Ronan's entire goal is now to just wipe out the Nova Corps, which still fails because Korath betrays him and T'Challa takes the orb. Anyway, and yeah. So uh, Drax's life is also probably changed as well. He's basically one of the members of the Guardians, but the Guardians don't really happen to come together because what ends up happening is Drax's family is saved because T'Challa stopped their invasion when, uh, okay, so basically, Drax became Drax because his family died because of Ronin, and because of this, here's the thing, that Ronin was gonna invade his planet, but T'Challa stopped that. So now, Drax is a happy man, he basically works as a bartender, which is amazing. Nebula also changed as well, she has more hair now, and basically, I think the reason why is because, because Thanos has changed, a lot of other things change as well, because here's the thing, Nebula explained in one of the movies, I believe, that uh, every time that she would lose a match or a fight to Gamora, Thanos would have to rip off one of her actual body parts and replace it with a metal part. So that's pretty horrifying. But obviously, since Thanos changed, uh, she has most of her hair back now, which is probably explains why in the movies she actually lost all of her hair and why the actor had to go bald. And speaking of actors, this is the same actor who played Thanos in Infinity War, Josh Brolin. Anyway, so T'Challa, uh, so Nebula here wants uh, something called the Embers of Genesis, which is supposed to be this thing. Yeah, there you go. The Embers of Genesis is basically this thing that what's called they're going to use to help... Uh, they're going to help uh, a species of people, a planet, basically. They're going to help a group of people, but they have to steal it from one of the most worst people ever, the Collector, okay? To further explain it, the Collector was very trash in the MCU, okay? The Collector was horrible. He's, he's supposed to be regarded as one of the MCU's elders because he's supposed to be one of the oldest beings of the universe, but he... But he was kind of trash as well. Mostly what he would do is he, he, would, he would mostly just take stuff from people. And yeah, it really didn't do much for him. So honestly, what ends up happening is... Um, but in this universe, the Collector is hugely buffed. He's way more buff. And he's also... He's way more stronger. And he has way more resources. Which I'll get into later. But also, Thanos explains that... Uh, the Black Order are basically not working for Thanos. If you don't know what the Black Order are... The Black Order, the Black Order is basically a group of people 
who uh who kind of work for Thanos, but they don't work for him anymore because Thanos turned to the light, while the Collector turned even more dark. And yeah, that's probably what ends up happening. Uh, they they they're able to explain the Embers of Genesis right now in this conversation right here. The supernova with the power to terraform entire ecosystems. With one ounce, you can heal a dying planet in minutes. And with a payload the size we're talking, we could feed billions of people on millions of worlds and eradicate hunger across the galaxy. Don't tell Captain Genocide over here. I'm gonna spoil his party. <laughs> New guy's pretty funny. I thought you work alone, daughter. Wait, 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 wait. She's your offspring? Adopted. He said a Okay, so basically they they explain that they 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 want the embers of Genesis so they can actually feed a dying planet, which I will get into later because you don't know whose planet that is. So anyway, so that just explains that the Black Order are working for the Collector now, not him. So that explains now. And basically their plan is for Thanos and Korath to cause it. Because if you remember, Korath l literally just called Thanos. Uh, he basically just called him uh, Captain Genocide. And he, didn't, and, he, and, he, and he wasn't too fond of that, so he wanted to, I think he wanted to get him back for it. So their plan was to cause a bunch of chaos, which which would cause the Black Order, which are basically in security. They would come after him, and they would try to stop them. And then Thanos is also pretty strong, so he could actually take on probably all of them, except for maybe like Call Obsidian, but I don't know. But anyway, so what ends up happening is he, uh, so they cause a bunch of chaos, which basically gives T'Challa time to look for the embers, and he ends up he ends up finding it thanks to Howard the Duck, who, has, who he ends up breaking out, and he ends up having him help him find the embers. And then once he does, he finds a ship. He finds a ship full of. Uh, he finds an old Wakanda ship, which I think this is called the Royal Talon. I'm not sure, but uh, in there he finds a recording from his from T'Chaka, which basically explains that he sent ships from Wakanda just to go look for him into space. Which is quite insane. Now, if you don't know, Wakanda is already is already advanced on the world when it comes to uh, space technology because their technology is way better than the world's. So basically, they would have already been ahead of that if the Cold War was happening, and basically they would have way been ahead of him. But so what ends up happening basically is uh, T'Challa is able to find out the recording. But unfortunately, Nebula ends up betraying him to the Collector because she explains to him that. Uh, she had to pay off some debt to the collector, and that was how she did it. And basically, Corvus Glaive, one of the Black Order, throw him in jail. Yandu gets really mad. Or no, not Yandu. T'Challa gets really mad at Yandu because Yandu apparently told him that uh, that uh, Wakanda was destroyed, and that it was it was never alive. That uh, uh, it was that it was destroyed, basically. So basically, uh, to further explain it, uh, Yandu kind of lied to him, and basically. Uh, yeah, he got mad at him really much, and what ended up happening is uh, T'Challa is taken out of the jail with Yondu, and he's basically put into this cage where the, where the collector orders him to be put into a, basically a wall display, so basically turn him into a picture, which obviously you can tell is not going to be good. And uh, meanwhile, Nebula ends up betraying Corvus Glaive by shooting him, which actually reveals that she actually did a triple cross, which is basically where she was pretending to be on their side and betraying them. But in reality, she was always on their side and she was never going to. So she explains that she never actually told Korath, Yondu, or Taserface, or even Thanos. She, she never told any of them except for T'Challa because they had to use, because it's actually better when you have their actual reaction instead of having them acting and faking it. So anyway... So Nebula reveals that she already took the embers when the collector had took it from T'Challa. So then what ends up happening is T'Challa is able to escape using his uh, Black Panther necklace. And he ends up uh, using this and he ends up breaking the glass, which is pretty smart. The show is pretty shocking me how they do, how they, uh, how they, how they explain things is very confusing, but I don't know how they do it. So anyway, so this guy, this member of the Black Order, Ebony Ma, he's supposed to have the powers to like, telekinesis and stuff like that i think in infinity war he had a one-on-one -on -one match with dr strange that was fun to watch and uh this is this is supposed to be uh the collector's slave girl and she and her planet is supposed to be the one that the embers of judges was supposed to help because so that's why and she was always planning on betraying the collector and she thought now was a good time which it was so anyway so uh now the collector comes in after uh seeing all the chaos that has happened and he basically tries to fight T'Challa one on one. Now, here's the crazy part: he has tons and tons of stuff here. Honestly, I don't know, but he has. But 
probably some of the most important ones, I believe, are Captain America's shield, Thor's hammer, and Korg's arm. But I'll explain Korg's arm in a little bit. So basically, uh, Captain America's shield probably means that either Cap is dead or probably. It probably means that Cap is dead and something must have happened to Earth. And then uh, Thor's hammer pro pro probably means that Asgard is probably no more. And there's probably even more evidence to back that up because later it's revealed that he also has Hela's helmet. And I didn't know this, but uh, Hela actually uses the helmet to summon swords out of her hands. So I don't know how, but I didn't know that was a thing though. So anyway, and then now the last thing is Korg's arm. Now, if you don't know who Korg is, Korg is supposed to be Thor's friend from Ragnarok. He was the guy playing Fortnite in Endgame. So apparently that means he's probably dead as well because his hand probably got chopped off. I would assume that that's him because uh, basically, so yeah. So uh, basically, uh, Thanos causes gets into a fight with Call Obsidian, which is kind of crazy. Yondu goes to help T'Challa, which what ends up happening is uh, basically uh, they are able to get him, and T'Challa gets a really cool fly knee onto his face, which is honestly quite insane. But it also probably is very destructive. And basically, she, the slave girl, as they escape, the slave girl ends up freeing all of his prisoners. So it's not it's not how the tables have turned. It's really how the cages have turned. But yeah, so anyway. So then they, they escape no, nowhere. Nowhere. And what ends up happening is they go back to Wakanda, and everything's happy again. Except for one little detail at the end. I think you know it. And yeah, Peter Quill is uh there is a there's a very short scene where peter quill is at dairy queen working as a janitor which is probably why he failed he that must that must be like something bad must have happened or i don't know something and then ego shows up and that's not good because you can already tell that he has the exact same plan that he does he has the exact same plan that he always planned to so that's really unfortunate because now everybody's basically screwed basically but to shorten this up for you this video is dedicated, and this episode of What If is dedicated to Chadwick Boseman because he is the one who played T'Challa. He is the one who kind of played the star role of T'Challa, and this is not going to be his last performance. He will have at least one more because he he will have at least one more performance before we have to actually say goodbye. So, yeah, obviously, I think that this, this episode should be as a uh, remembrance of Chadwick Boseman and always uh remember Chadwick Boseman as his role in Black Panther but also his his other roles in other movies and yeah so rest in peace Chadwick Boseman thank you so much and yeah anyways if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a like subscribe to the channel comment down below tell me what you thought if you have any other video suggestions I may do them and yeah here's a video you can watch right here here's another video you can watch right here comment down below what you thought and subscribe peace